Hello and welcome to our live stream. My name is Wes and I will be your host. Today we have some very special guests. I am thrilled to have with me members of the Medium team. We have Gio, who is an art director, and Kelly, who is the product manager for Medium. Medium was acquired by Adobe at the end of 2019, and the Medium team has joined forces with the Substance team, and we are now all together under 3D and Immersive at Adobe. This is our first live stream featuring Medium, and you will discover how to sculpt basic shapes and forms in VR, as well as texturing with Substance Painter. So, Kelly and Gio, welcome to today's stream, man. It's so awesome to have you guys here, man. And I'm just completely thrilled. I'm just pumped for this live stream, man. Uh, sculpting and modeling is, is one of my favorite aspects of 3D. And Gio, I can't wait to see what you have for us. Can't wait to show it. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's going to be awesome. Thanks so much for the warm welcome, Wes. Um, so as Wes said, the Medium product and the Medium team moved to Adobe last year, and we are absolutely thrilled. I cannot overstate that to be working as, alongside the Substance team in the 3D and Immersive Org. Um, I don't know how many of those watching know what Medium is, but it's basically, essentially, a modeling tool for VR. Um, and we get a lot of free things with VR in that you can use your natural hand movements and your head movements as a camera. Um, so it's a really intuitive, natural way to create 3D assets. You're creating 3D assets in 3D, which is pretty incredible. Um, so I don't really want to talk about it too much. I'd rather just Geo show his stuff and talk about it. He's the master and you're going to learn so many amazing things. And we can't wait to, to hear from the viewers. We'll answer any questions that you have. So take it away, Geo. Awesome. Oh, great, um, Kelly. Uh, Gio, I'm sorry. R real quick before you get going, yeah. I just want to also say that uh, we do have uh, Brent uh, from, from the Medium team as well as Marine from the Substance team. They are both in the chat. So if you guys have questions, uh, just post them in the chat. We'll be collecting things for a live stream. Uh, I'm sorry, for a QA and a at the end uh, we can discuss with Gio. All right. Thanks, Gio. Sorry, man. Take it away. Uh, no worries, man. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen right now. Um, let me see. Sorry. All righty. Um, so let me switch to frame here. So my name is Giovanni Nackpil. I'm an art director uh, currently at Oculus. And um, pretty much in my previous uh, career, I was, um, I was in film and visual effects for about 12 years uh, at Industrial Light and Magic. So I, I had the opportunity to work on a lot of the movies or a lot of characters I grew up with, like the Hulk, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> and a bunch of other things. Um, so it was a dream come true, went there for 12 years and then decided to uh, get into sort of the real time gaming side of things and had the really amazing opportunity to work at Valve. Uh, so I was there for two years. And then from Valve, I went over to Oculus where I met uh, a small group of uh, developers building this uh, really cool VR app called uh, back then Oculus Medium. and so. That's how I, I got to know the team. And obviously me being a character artist, I gravitated to, towards um, that team because of what they're doing. Um, so before I show sort of the, 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 the inside the VR stuff, I kind of wanted to take you guys through the, uh, my journey in terms of using the software because from what I've observed, there's a lot of people um, intimidated by it just because, you know, Rightfully so, it's so new, it's such a new way of working for those used to uh, non-VR uh, ways of working. So I kind of wanted to kind of show you guys my, my, uh, my journey to kind of say that it's, it, is, it is a learning curve, but you know, it's definitely worth the investment in time in the end. So uh, it pains me to show you the early stuff, but we'll just breeze through this uh, really quick to, to the point where I'm at right now uh, with Medium. So, um, early stuff, it was, you know, I put on the headset, tried it in VR for the first time. I was amazed in terms of like having the physicality of the, the, the models, like seeming like it's in front of me, right? Like I've never had that happen before, uh, being used to the confines of the 2D screen. Um, so, you know, I mean, I, I was, I was kind of getting some, some results I was semi happy with, but never really to the point where. It, it was sort of uh, the quality I was used to with say ZBrush or other software packages because it was it was lacking the control that I, I needed to to have clean surfaces. You know, um, a friend of mine, Matt from Valve, likened it to air sculpting, which is which was very true because you don't have the 
tactility of the the Wacom on the surface you can press against, right? So you're you're working against uh, air and and you know that could be kind of fatiguing. So I'll show you guys later uh, ways to circumvent that. Um, but uh, so yeah, these are sort of the the early days, um, and I decided to kind of drop it for six months. You know, I was I was fairly frustrated. Amazed but frustrated, frustrated because of the lack of control. So, you know, six months took a break from it. But at the back of my head, there's something that was really um, kind of gnawing at me in terms of, uh, you know, I should pick it up again for some reason. And 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 sure enough, I did. You know, the first attempt of that, like, I wanted to try and create a, something closer to film quality because I think back then, uh, medium work was. Uh, they were kind of more on like the, the really cool animated style of stuff. So I wanted to, to kind of go towards more on the realistic side of things. Um, and this was my early attempts in that. And then I, 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 I realized that as I was doing this, I was building not just um, static pose creatures or characters, but something materialized in me where I was trying to tell more story-based um, uh, work. Uh, so this, this is a, these are sort of like examples of that. And, you know, I think it was because being in VR, you just, your imagination just, it, there, there's a side of it that's that's awakened, right? Like you, you kind of want to live in a world of what you create. And so the I was telling more stories, which was a very interesting thing because before coming from production, I was just used to, uh, you know, static, static uh, T poses. Uh, and so having done that, the team suddenly introduced the move tool, which for me was a game changer because prior to that, I was just kind of like, it was like sculpting in peanut butter or whipped cream, you know, trying to control the surface without really having the tactility of using my hands to control it. And so when they released the move tool, I was now able to get like the, the forms that I, that I really had hoped to have gotten before. Um, and you know this this scene. I'll just kind of breeze through it really quick so we can get to the VR stuff. Um, is uh, again storytelling in some way, Bruce Lee versus uh, versus um, you know some some demonic creatures, uh, just kind of like my jam. Um, and this I wanted to show because uh, you know people ask me so. Uh, what do you do after medium? Is it just in medium? Like, no, it, you know, medium is a tool just like any other tool in in the pipeline. You know, you can export it out as an OBJ FBX uh, with with vertex colors and UVs, um, UV tiles, I should say. And this one I brought into ZBrush to to further refine the uh, the model because ZBrush is really strong in, in a lot of ways that medium isn't, and vice versa. You know, so. You kind of, uh, I kind of just look for the strengths of each software, what each software brings, and and this one I, I had to bring it into ZBrush to to be able to get the fine, you know, uh, wrinkles and sort of like uh, re more refined break, uh, clay polish um, surfacey stuff on the, uh, the the forms here. Uh, also, another medium to ZBrush example. This one we actually printed out really, really tall and had someone paint it. For, who comes from like a, a visual effects background in, in film. Um, again, like I'd say probably 60 percent, uh, 60 to 70 percent medium, and then the rest, like the detail-y stuff, uh, was done in ZBrush. So it's a very seamless um, pipeline uh, I found. Uh, of course, the Hulk, because I love Hulk. Uh, this was purely medium, just brought into ZBrush to kind of check the forms, uh, which I do. Uh, this particular one, I. I was uh, I had the goal of developing um, ways to detail in medium uh, and kind of vibing off of more of like the clay sculptors back in the day uh, of film where they would actually have techniques to to graft and, and implement each scale. So all of these were handmade or hand placed, I should say, instead of using alphas, which I think has a, in my opinion, has a better way of uh, uh, giving a sense of rhythm and cohesiveness on the surface. And I'll show you guys that process later on. Sorry for sounding rushed, but I just kind of want to get into the, the VR stuff here. And this was printed uh, 18 inches, I believe, uh, for Monster Palooza, back when we were able to physically be at Monster Palooza, sad face. Um, just the new figurative works that I've done, um, all medium uh, rendered in substance, which is a pipeline I've, I've grown to love uh, in terms of final presentation. Um, I would sculpt it in medium um, 
export it out and then bring it into Substance uh, Painter for uh, to be rendered in IRA, you know. I, I believe this one was Maverick. I brought it to Substance and then Maverick. So as you can see, you know, I'm like hopping many different stones to get to the end result, which is, you know, perfectly fine or just stay in medium in some cases. Okay, so this is the, uh, the critter we're gonna be working on uh, as an example. The, uh, if there's any uh, hitches here. Um, oh, that's okay. Yeah, we had a couple mic hiccups, but I think it's switching over to the the mic on the headset. Oh no, um, were no, you guys able to now. hear? Oh, okay. Yeah, you're, okay. it's okay now. It was just like a sentence or so. It's okay now. Okay. Um, all right. So this is Oculus Medium, and as you can tell, um, everything is dark. Uh, it doesn't come as a default like this. Um, uh, Gio, I, I'm sorry, actually, uh, mm -hmm. I don't think we the uh, oculus uh, medium uh, i'm sorry the medium um screen i'm still looking at the character you had oh 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 uh, let me i forgot to um... oh that's weird it's actually on it's on my screen right now i guess i should reshare it huh yeah let's let's try that cuz uh yeah i think what we're seeing right now is the just the character that you had that was in the windows uh, photo viewer okay can you see this now Oh uh, yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sorry about that, guys. All right. So um, as you can see, everything's pitch black. It doesn't come default like this. My preference is usually like I like when I sculpt in clay. I like everything dark with just a spotlight. So the beauty of medium is you can mimic your preference in 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 real life, like uh, to 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 mimic it. So um, let's go ahead and uh, activate the clay new layer here sorry i'm just kind of fumbling a little here um add sculpt layer okay where is my sculpt layer okay anyway so before i actually do anything i just wanted to, to touch on the creature like what i like to do before anything is i like to sketch out um do a lot of sketches and so these are excerpts from my sketchbook uh, three of them um out of like 10 let's say but um you know the the creature i've kind of i like to work as you'll see in in forms so the bigger forms come first primary secondary and tertiary it just ins ensures a, a really good progression of readability and medium as as i'll show you is perfect for that um okay so let me figure out why this oh that's where it is something really funky going on with a position here i am sorry so mirror let me just do a reset here reset view all right clay new layer ah it's so weird that it's hold on let me sorry guys let me, let me adjust where the Mirror. Oh, I'm just gonna have to reposition myself. I don't know why it's not working. Um, uh, no, no worries, man. Take your time, <laughs> Gio. It's it's how it always is when you're doing the I live know. presentation, man. It, everything like gets nuts. Actually, I'm gonna close Medium and open it up again, if you guys don't mind. Yeah, no problem, okay. man. Take your time. Yeah, no worries all right. at all. Uh, meanwhile, you know, if there's any questions. Uh, let me reopen that. Yeah, we have uh, Brent and uh, Maureen from, from our team. They're in the chat just uh, okay. answering th some questions and stuff. And I'm also having them collect a, a few questions to see. Maybe we'll have some more of a oh. Q&A at the end. OK, now we're in business. All right. OK. so. First things first is yeah. let's... now. Do you have? We don't see your screen. I don't think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right. Let me screen share. There's medium now. Oh, there it is. And maximize. Is that good? Yeah. There we go. All right. Okay. 
for real this time. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So the sketches, what I'll do is let's first tackle uh, breaking down this character as simple shapes, simple geometric shapes. And I'll, and you guys will see where I'm, I'm going to go with this one. Um, so, and, and kind of assessing what shapes to do first, you know, like looking at this guy, you know, there's, he's got a, a cranium here and then just simple shapes that make up the features of his face. So let's first start off with the cranium, starting off with a sphere. And I've mentioned this to the team before. I really dislike that blinding white uh, default color. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint it uh, closer to a Chavant clay that I, like, I used to sculpt with, um, which is sort of like this tan uh, color. So moving quickly here. So that's the cranium. And I'm just gonna quickly lay down the shapes as different layers. I'm gonna create a new add sculpt layer here for a different layer for this particular, let me sample the color there. Um, for the color there. And then the ma will be a sphere. So I'm, I'm kind of, not really touching on the specifics and the nitty gritty of the interface since, you know, we'll eat up a lot of time. That could be, uh, there's a lot of um, tutorials about the medium interface uh, and, and how to get to these tools. I figured it's better to, to kind of show the concepts and how to achieve, um, uh, you know, complex, creating complex characters in this demo with medium versus like uh, going sort of um, uh, in depth with the interface. Oops. So just quickly duplicating this and then moving it down. You know, there's these sort of two wings that this creature has on his face. Let's put in uh, the neck, some semblance of the neck here via this capsule. All right, so pretty much, you know, the uh, most of the elements are in place for the primary forms of what this creature is going to be. Obviously, you know, it's not meant to look like uh, it's made out of a balloon. So let's go ahead and start um, with the move tool. I'm going to use, as you can see, the move tool right here. I'm going to sculpt it all in in roughly what they should be. And if you notice, the move tool that I have in terms of the the radius. Of, of the sphere is pretty big. Uh, you know, I don't really, at this point in the game, when I'm working on primary forms, I don't like to work with a smaller radius because it introduces the wobblies. You know, what, what I like about um, working with a, a big uh, radius is that it, it almost acts like a, a Bezier curve. You know, I'm, I'm able to look at the curve and control it while retaining the acceleration of the, the curve. Um, and not introduce any undesired uh, um, noise. Let's look at the light here. Okay, so I'm just gonna, again, quickly push things in place. And I also have the setting um, fairly low for the move tool. Okay. And then what I'll do, instead of creating a new layer and applying the geometry, I'm just gonna select this, select what's already there and, and hit duplicate, and then just move it in place to kind of fill in the other anatomical parts that's needed of this creature. So in terms of speed, that's how I work. I, I like to kind of duplicate what's already there um, <clears throat> in, in whatever form that makes sense, right? So just kind of filling in, you know, the silhouette here. And then let's uh, start blocking in some semblance of the, the mouth. I'm gonna use a tool called inflate. So just going really simple. At this stage in the game, we, we're not really looking for any um, noticeable, you know, anatomical accuracy. Uh, we're just kind of concerned about like designing this creature in the most basic, primary shaped uh, representation. So let's fix that neck really quick. And then, you know, I'm already introducing some 
Uh, let me adjust the light here. Some curvature to the neck. Some, some, some nice acceleration leading up to the back of the cranium there. And then let's add a little gullet, like he's got a little uh, sort of gullet here. Um, new layer. Let's go with my favorite tool here or uh, stamp. Sort of like, you know, how uh, bovines or, or cows have that sort of loose fleshy or turkeys, you know, dangly flesh by the neck there, like a strand. Um, you know, so roughly looking like he he's kind of getting there, I guess. Um, but you know, like there's still some work here, obviously. And at, at this point, I tend to kind of switch to active layer only on the move tool, which right now, you know, the move tool only affects an active layer. But if I uh, click that off, I should say, I'm able to affect whatever is visible. So that's such a great thing about the move tool is I can then switch switch modes that way. Hey, Gio, um, as you're mm -hmm. working through this with the geometry, like how do you control like the geometry? Like, uh, I, I mean, I'm thinking about this in terms of ZBrush. Or is, it, is it similar to like a, a Dynamesh type topology or is it just like a subdivision that you increase and move up and down levels? Yeah, it's um, actually it's uh, I guess it would be similar because it's SDF uh, in terms and the, the medium team can probably speak to it better than I can. But it's voxel based S SDF uh, rather than polygonal, which is what ZBrush is. So with this, um, I can I can definitely increase it uh, or decrease it, but it, it doesn't retain the subdivisional history like ZBrush. Um, so it's it's a uh, you know, it, you can't kind of shuffle up and down. So if you increase the resolution, it's a commitment you have to kind of um, be willing to make uh, because of it. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know if that answers. Uh, your oh, question. yeah, sure. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah. yeah. All right. So say at this point, we're in a state where, okay, well, the primary shapes are fairly readable. And I'm and as you can see, I'm using this, and this is very important now, as, as you'll discover later on in the process, the intersection point, let me lower the radius here, between the layers, the, the intersection point is a very important thing I look at. And I use that a lot in terms of, of uh, design, in terms of, um, oops, like how, how, how those forms terminate, um, you know, the just the design of that line, as as you'll see later on, I'm kind of like, okay, well, maybe there's a slope here, or maybe instead of a slope, there's a slope up, uh, there's a ramp up upwards. Um, yeah, so I'm going to just take everything and, and merge, hit merge. Now that I'm semi happy with uh, how everything's looking, which I'm really not, because it usually takes uh, me longer at this phase, but for the purpose of this demo, let's say I'm happy. And I'm, I pretty much selected all the layers and merged everything so that I can selectively smoothen um, areas, of kind of giving it the impression now that it's an organic shape as opposed to a creature composed of separate geometric forms, right? I'm, I'm now adding a, some sense of skin, like smoothing out areas that may have a stretch of skin and retaining certain areas that don't um, just to, to add that interest and contrast. Because my intention right now is to start making this thing look like an organic looking creature, right? Not, again, not geometric creature, but an organic looking creature. So, and then rinse and repeat. Let's now move on to smaller forms. Um, so as you hey, notice, Gio, um, mm -hmm. hey, Gio, sorry, man, uh, question while, while we're here in Oculus, uh, I keep saying Oculus, <laughs> they're going to kill me, <laughs> Marine's going to kill me, that, I'm that sorry. That feels better, man, because I, I do that yeah. too. <laughs> Mar Marine, I know you're listening, please don't, <laughs> please don't kill me. Uh, so if, um, uh, one of the questions here was, uh, what's the inner sphere for in the move tool? Oh, the inner sphere is, um, the, oh, where is it? 
Oh, the inner radius, yeah. So that's the hardness. Um, let's demo on this one. So you see that? With, I, I typically turn that off. Um, because that that so if you go a hundred percent on that thing, it's it then and what's cool about it is it actually acts like a move, like you're you're able to physically move a layer because there's no um, fall off, uh, right? So um, with that set to a hundred, like oh man, I just want to quickly move this rather than use a translate tools, I could just go boop, move it around. Um, but I typically since again I like to work with. Um, just, I, I like to retain smoothness and and uh, not introduce any wobblies. I tend to turn that off, but it's very useful in a lot of cases. Like maybe for hard surface modeling. Oh, you I earned a reward. That. <laughs> so I'm just now adding uh, secondary shapes here, and I'm not gonna like take much more time here um, because you know I want to get on to the next stage. But typically at this stage, I'm I'm just adding these shapes to to start start fleshing out the anatomy. So maybe you know let's start defining that that, that there's a separation here between between mid face and upper face. So let's put put a, a much more prominent uh, form, the lazy mouse in ZBrush. That's a bit too high. Um, yeah, strength. So I'm just gonna, what's going on here? Ah, let's turn it off for now. Actually, let's increase the resolution. And what I'm doing is I'm just grafting further landmarks of what what forms I should I should put. Yeah, it's not looking pretty, but whatever. Um, and then, you know, I'm not gonna leave it like that. What I'll usually do is then start adding a new layer, block in, block in my desired form. Right, and maybe it's like a hard beak, so it's a little sharper there. New layer, and as you can see, like once you get in a cadence, this this way of working is is, is really is really fast. Um, I'm just doing this. Yeah, man, this is so cool. I mean, yeah, just watching you just build up these forms so quickly. We're seeing lots of comments about that too, where people are like, "Man, he's it looks it looks good, and it's it's he's gotten there so fast." Oh yeah, no, it is really fast. Um, and and what I tend to do too is again work with what's there. Like say you know there's a um, there's a sort of like tectonic plate looking layered vibe that that uh, the beak has. Um, what I'll do is uh, duplicate that and then and then just kind of move it up and then and then start adding some some of the you know sort of like serrations that 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 you get. Um, what the heck you said? Yeah, Gio, just a few few other questions while we're here. Um, so is there a way to track how many divisions your layers uh, have, I guess? Uh, unfortunately, none that I know of. Um, okay. So yeah, it, it, it would be nice to, um, but I, I don't think medium works that way in terms of like having like a history of subdivision. Um, yeah. So, you know, like, and then from there, I can just like combine that with a main layer. Uh, and if the resolution's high enough, you'll, you'll see it crisper, but let's move on to stage two. So I'm going to do the Martha Stewart after commercial break. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's um, take out the Turkey from the oven and ding, ding. Voila, it's done. Voila. And so well, that's... pretend. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, G. I was gonna say while that's loading up, there was another one asking about lazy mouse. Like, what? Why do you need that? Uh, they're saying they have full control over their body. Does it just smooth out the missing precision from the device? Mm. Yeah, it's um, well. If you're a coffee drinker like myself, my my hands are really shaky, 
So, um, uh, so without Lazy Mouse, you know, wait, hold on. There's a lot of uh, noise, but with Lazy Mouse, it's steady stroke, or let's call it steady stroke. It's not really called Lazy Mouse in, in medium in the medium world. Um, I'm able to really get swooping lines, which is, you know, th this creature is almost like a bike helmet, right? It's a very, there's a, or a car, like a sports car. There's a lot of swooping lines and, and it just helps, helps you um, create, create the, the, and guide your hand, I should say, into creating those lines as opposed to without it, where it's just gonna, again, get me back into the, I call it the wobblies, that world, which, you know, uh, I can't stand it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it just helps you to 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 create those smooth sweeping curves and things like that. Yeah, exactly. Um, so let's pretend that you know the, we we've been working on like adding those layers, still working clean, right? I'm still working on on shapes that are readable uh, at this point in the game, going through the same exact method that I was showing you guys. Um, and and so you know, let's continue to work on this a little bit more. And yeah, what's if there's so super and, clean right now? I mean, I'm, oh, I'm yeah. just amazed by it. I mean, this is yeah, smooth and clean, and 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 uh, it's amazing you're getting this quality just in a in a sculpting application in VR. Yeah, and and my intention is like just it's almost like again like a bike helmet, right? Like you, and and I've learned this I think from from practical clay sculptors is they always focus if you always focus on the big to small forms first rather than like a mishmash of everything as you're working where it just becomes sort of like a, a noisy surface. Um, then it the, 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 the sculpture doesn't become as powerful if you approach it that way where you're not thinking big to small. But for me, and, and you know, I don't, I don't wanna generalize obviously, but this is what works for me. For me, it, if you think that way, then you're, you're actually being very tactical about what, what to put in. You know, you're, you're, you're being very meticulous at this point so that you can, once we get to detailing this guy out, which we will, that's where the fun stuff begins because this will provide the best canvas for the detail as opposed to if it's already noisy at this phase before even the detail, then you're not really seeing what the structure and anatomy of the creature is for you to properly put the detail in there, right? Oh, so yeah. Man, Gio, I'm sorry, I gotta ask. <laughs> yeah, I know, I, I keep asking. Towards the bottom of the neck, the the hard surface edges that you get. So you you did all that in medium to that to that polished level. Yeah, oh, and this isn't even, oh, the next level or the next file I'll show you guys is actually um, like be better looking than this one, which is all hard surface. Uh, wow. that is that is a demo on its own the hard surface stuff <laughs> oh i'd love <laughs> but, to see that man yeah, yeah we got to have you back for that gosh I, I love hard surface and like it's so so clean uh, sorry yeah. man i keep interrupting you but it's just so great no 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 any 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 uh, it's not an interruption man anything to break me up from just constantly talking <laughs> yeah so, um so what let's fo let's focus on this area because what i love about um sculpting uh, is is conveying how forms interact with each other, right? So using the inflate tool, actually let's increase the steady stroke on this. I'm still, I haven't had coffee this morning. I don't know what's introducing, maybe a little nervous. Yeah, Gia, so, I'm also gonna throw in some more questions for you while you're going. Is there yeah, a, a hotkey to make a new sculpt layer? Um, it, I mean, because there's really no keyboard access, so the, the the closest to a hotkey is just thumbstick down and and then shoot shoot it there, like click on that. Gotcha. Um, okay. Yeah, um, it'd be nice if it's like a, a, some kind of action you blink or something, you know, like if yeah. eye tracking ever comes along. Um, but uh, uh, how do you see mm -hmm. all the layers? Is there a visual stack somewhere? Oh yeah, uh, so there's a scene graph here. And so if I create a new layer, the, this, this orb, this wireframe orb represents a new layer, but it's an empty layer. So it's a wireframe, I guess. Uh, so you can then select layer four, which is the head, layer two, which is the empty layer. So we'll delete layer, the empty layer for now. Um, a little bit about the, the way I use the inflate tool. And Wes, if I go, like, if we're kind of like 
running low on time, let me let me know because I tend to kind of just in VR lose focus of time here. But yeah, no um, worries, man. Yeah, we'll keep it going. <laughs> uh, so what I what as you'll see me do is I'm gonna create a crease, and I'm overshooting it, right? I'm not like I I, I want to focus here, but I'm not gonna be localized about my mark and leave it there. I'm always overshooting, drawing through. Um, you know, if it's there, then I start here and end all the way here. And then I can just always smooth that. And what that does is it gives me the the movement. Uh, as as you see, as you can hopefully see, you know, this creature is based on a lot of rhythms and rhythm lines that kind of form and flow in and in and out of each other. And so that's that's how I really like to to um, to play with forms. So I grafted that that uh, I grafted that uh, line, which will then fill in with a new layer. And this is essentially the the, the really kind of just juicy part of oops, working in medium for me. Like when I'm when I'm in this mode of like, okay, well, yeah, now I could just get in there and, and really focus on this area. And I'm, I'm grabbing the tail and the head, kind of wrapping it around in the belly, which was the belly I consider is where <clears throat> the peak of the form is. And I'm looking at it in like many different angles. I never, I never just look at it from one view. I'm always looking at it, assessing in many different angles. It's a bit too much strength here. Yeah, Gia, I think this feeds into another question. Someone was asking about adding certain bits of geo to certain layers. I, I think this is kind of what you're doing here, right? Just adding a new layer mm -hmm. to to piece this in, and then I guess you merge it down after. Yeah, exactly. And and that is essentially my process. Like to get all these forms, you're never really going to get it, get the fullness just by doing, um, you know, kind of like this, this leaving it at that i'm gonna get in there and add like a form and then bake it in and then smoothing it out uh similar to what i'm doing here um it's it's just again so that i can i can design non-destructively how how these forms interact with each other like i'm thinking in my head okay there's a compression here so there's <clears throat> probably let's increase this a little bit in resolution i should say um, you know, there's a bulge here, which then would cause this to bulge out a little, and then this would kind of, you know, flatten here because there's a skin stretch here, right? Um, and so when I merge all these three elements, I can then, you know, just start fusing it with the rest of the body tactically smoothing where it needs to be you know like kind of like as i'm imagining the the most contrasty part of this where the shadow would be was around here and then as it goes goes towards down here it's going to stretch so it's going to be a lot less um dark in terms of uh shadows you know just to achieve that naturalism so yeah so and then you know i just work it through the entirety of the the creature all over the place. I mean, this isn't even like the final state. I can just spend another week just constantly doing that before I even put uh, an ounce of detail on this guy. Now, speaking of detail, uh, let's move on to details. <clears throat> so in Medium, what's great about it, one of my favorite things is the ability to, to load images. And so I have right here, I have it hidden. So like Photoshop, the eyeball, hide and hide. Um, I have a set of images here, reference images I'm using as reference of turtles. And let's hide that one. Creature effects, you know, like uh, kind of more of like the movie style uh, creatures that I like to reference off of. And I don't know what this soft form, oh, soft forms are kind of more like, I guess, you know, these sort of like uh, folds of, of, of fleshy goodness bits. <laughs> the only way I could describe them. Um, so I, ha I have them categorized that way. And what's great is that I, if I, you can nestle uh, a bunch of images under one so that I could just go nature scales, select the main, oh, 
let's go with the one that's not hidden, oops, which is soft forms. So if I select the main parent, I can just move it, scale it, or select it individually. Oh, this is interesting. Let's work with that, you know? And that's a very great way of, of, of working. Like I've, I've never, I'm a reference fanatic whenever I do something new, uh, a character. Uh, so having this ability is better than what I would do before, like clip pictures from a magazine and post them up on a billboard or something. So it's beside me while I work. This is actually like, the dream version of that you know um and then wow. so so from here i'm just gonna let's actually go with the turtle forms first here uh let's go nature scales yeah, and that kind of um, leads into another question we had which is uh basically the the benefits of using vr versus desktop with mouse and keyboard i mean you're mm -hmm. kind of showcasing some of that oh yeah and, and and to touch on that it's essentially you know i mean obviously we, we all are used to mouse and keyboard and have been for such a long time, but the benefits of VR, as I can tell you, is um, the context of scale and physicality, right? Like, it, I mean, there is ever no way I can convey to you guys how it is like to be here without being here in VR. Like, no 2D screen can ever communicate that, right? So being here, I feel like this is physically in front of me. If I scale it this big, it feels like a gargantuan. If I scale it this big, it feels like a toy, right? So, um, but being able to, more than, more than that though, as a sculptor, being able to see form in the round, not beyond the, the flatness of the 2D screen, the fact that I can kind of view it in the round gives me a better control and, and result in terms of, um, uh, of the forms that I'm, I'm, I'm doing and me being very, very meticulous when it comes to form, that is of utmost importance. So a little bit on detail. So where do we start now that we've say devoted two weeks of lovingly, you know, putting in all these swooping forms, it's like, okay, well, where do you put the first mark of detail? And um, and to be honest, I also kind of just, that's a very intimidating thing for me too. So what I like to usually do is if I had done this correctly, I've already established a lot of the rhythm lines and the flow of the creature. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just kind of tracing, like without even implementing any mark, I'm just kind of like vibing off of like, you know, the flow of where this guy is, kind of letting my hand kind of decide where to put the first detail it's kind of i mean not to sound corny it's kind of like just dancing around there right um so i'm kind of like okay it kind of feels like yeah it kind of just wanted to it wants to do this sort of okay so let's go with um oops let's go with with what what the controllers are trying to tell me so it's kind of i'm going to start putting in um division lines like similar to uh you know what you see here i'm going to start grafting all that in steady strokes a bit too much here so i'm going to lower it lower it down so so geo with this part here this kind of relates to another question so is there a general inflate functionality like zbrush so you're trying to put in these folds is there a way that you can just uh, use a little inflate option for that mm -hmm. does something like so, that exist it, it's actually in the same tool i'm using inflate but uh, subtractively. So if I double tap the gear, green gear button, it becomes uh, an additive tool, which is really good too, because, um, which I'll use later, it, it acts just like the inflate tool in ZBrush. It's a really good inflate tool too, to kind of just reinforce a lot of the, the, the forms that I've already put in there using the layer method. I tend to kind of just, with a low setting, kind of just, um, uh, a friend from makeup makeup effects told me about this it's called kissing the surface it's you're just kind of like <laughs> lightly yeah. you're not being very heavy-handed uh, and i think that's a good way of looking at it from many aspects of the process you just kind of want to kiss it kiss the surface not not you know at this point of the game at least um where you you really want to achieve that subtlety like yeah, so I, so I added like a, a passive inflate, which actually gave it a little bit more fullness afterwards. So back to our detailing here. Let's um, 
kind of just uh I, i'm gonna be quick about this guys so that we can kind of go on to like zbrush and and and, and painter uh but I wanted to show another method of, of uh, grafting. So what I was showing you guys before was uh, using the inflate tool, but there's also this really cool stamp here uh, uh, using the clay tool. There's this stamp I like to call the needle nose. I don't know why, but I mean, I kind of just came up with that name for some reason. And and this is actually a good substitute, or it, it's uh, it's sort of like I would consider to be the, the damn standard of, um, of, of medium. Oh, wow. That's of, so cool. Yeah. yeah. So it's almost like, okay, I'm just there. And, and I like to put this actually, if I, if I hit the, the thumbstick down, it detaches from the stamp and I can just reorient it based on where, where, where I decide it to be. And I usually like to orient it here because when I used to sculpt in clay, that's where the tip of the, the, the sculpting, um, Kemper tool would be and it actually is a very compelling like the control I have it feels it, it just feels very physical so I'm using this to kind of just be all you know makeup effects about it where those go and, and and I can always increase the resolution to kind of not get this to be looking jaggy but uh, I'm afraid like right now there's a bit too much uh, resolution here I wasn't tactical about it I don't want to accidentally crash medium um but uh so but this is sort of another way of just Okay, everybody, I think we had a little bit of a technical issue here. Uh, we we're just checking it on our side. I think maybe we lost uh, Gio. There was a crash on his end. So uh, bear with us for just a moment here. We'll get things uh, settled. Yeah, I think it was Gio's end that we kind of lost his feed. Okay, everyone, just bear with us just for a moment here. I think uh, Gio's coming back. Sorry, we just lost his feed for a moment. Hey, guys. Um, there he is. But yeah. Uh, okay, I'm, but my computer <laughs> just did a hard reset for whatever reason. Uh, I'm back now. I'm back now. Okay, man, no problem. Hey, no yeah. worries, dude. It's a live show. Of course, of course things yeah. like this always happen. All right, so uh, are you rebooting back up now? Yeah, uh, I'm, <clears throat> I'm going to open up Medium again. Um, and then let's just move on to the next phase here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We'll probably do that. And while, while that's opening, just a few questions I can hit, like, yeah, uh, basically sure. some people are asking how, how long did it take you to do this sculpt in medium? Uh, this one, it, it was a little hard to assess just how long it took. Cause I was doing it on and off work, you know? Um, but let's say about like two to three weeks of just kind of figuring out like the breakdown of, um, of uh of, of the design and all that stuff hold on let me just load load that scene back up and then i'll share my scene screen because i, I kind of wanted to show um one one aspect of of the process oh, yeah. how long do we have wes uh, let's see we're, we are about uh 52 minutes in so uh you know we're looking at about uh, another maybe 40 minutes left you're coming in really um uh, i can't really hear you as much oh. Can't hear me? Actually, hold on. Maybe it's my. That's weird. Yeah, the audio is is. Um... Share screen. Medium. Alrighty. Can you guys hear me? Okay? Yeah, we can hear you. 
Oh, you're you're really really faint for some reason. Uh, okay, let me try to figure that out. Hold on, man. Just uh, keep going, and I'll oh, see if I can. Oh, you're better now. You're better now. Okay, actually. yeah. <laughs> Who knows, right. man? It's just. Uh... Woo! Yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, just oh, well. really quick, <laughs> before we move on, um, I'll be really quick about this now. So, you know, I'm kind of just like kind of go, abiding by the flow of of what I've I've done. I'm 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 just grafting, you know, where those wrinkle lines would be, and then adding a slight smooth to it to kind of tame it a little bit, and then and then from here these become then my landmarks for uh, further form development. Is it this one? Yeah, actually no. For for scales, I like. I like this stamp here, sort of like a flatter version of, of uh, what I was using. Um, all righty, and then and then you know, sort of similar to ah, that white color. Sorry. <laughs> um, I was just kind of um, move it all in place based on whatever area that is, and this is what I did with the um, the dinosaur, if you guys remember. And then I would just duplicate this. And the way I, in which I would move it, actually, I found that if, let me undo that. It's a good trick here. So I duplicated the scale, but the way in which I moved it, I did not grab it from the midpoint, but rather I grabbed it from the end point here. And what that did, was it gave me sort of an accelerated pull that that I don't know if it's you know maybe it's just in my head but it's abiding by the the movement again it's all about giving movement to it right so it just kind of stretched it so that it gave it motion uh, it sounds very artsy for it yeah, I don't know if that actually even made sense but oh, I no, always man, typically good, good. grab it down to the uh, the lower edge right so again it kind of sheared it in a way that's like directional i guess is what i'm trying Oops. so so geo you can hear me okay still now yeah you're, you're okay great uh, perfect now all right okay good so uh while you're talking about this one of the other questions we had was uh how do you keep gesture of your forms uh, it says uh, on more dynamic pose while working with different parts always zooming out you know zooming out checking you're on uh, always constantly checking with with anything not, not just with the bigger gestures but with also this like I'm, I'm always assessing, um, like constantly turning. That's really the only way to, because the danger is, you know, you get all gestural at first, but then as you're working, you're working on it. And this goes with me. I lose that dy dynamism that I, I so tirelessly tried to retain. It's just the nature of things. You lose, you kind of like focus on things and you, you, you fall in love with certain things and it, it then stiffens the, the, the work right so you always have to kind of zoom out take yourself pull yourself back look at it assess and then you know oh man this is kind of getting a little stiff so kind of just pull that forward accelerate that back so it's like a you know i want it to be that sports car feel again so that's that's i mean it's really no shortcut you just have to kind of be diligent about it so let's move on to a new file. And I'm hoping my computer, it did it twice this week. So I'm hoping it doesn't reset itself again. Um, if so. Yeah, so I, uh, yeah. while that's loading here, uh, mm -hmm. I guess there's a few other questions. Uh, let's see, uh, these are kind of, I might wanna keep some of these for Kelly, I think near the end. Uh, this one was how many lights can medium have in the scene? I guess you can set up a few lights. Yeah, um, so right now I have one, my main spotlight but I can always add a light. Actually, I've never really tried more than two. Let's, oh, look at that. Now we have a three-point lighting set up here. Um, and then, you know, given a nice rim light here. That's actually really cool. Yeah, yeah so awesome. let's let's keep adding. Let's. <laughs> let's <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe, doesn't... Okay, yeah, maybe not. We'll probably, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's gonna crash let's, again. Hey, let's just delete them for now yeah. <laughs> to be safe. <laughs> um, all right. So essentially, you know, this is sort of like the result of that. Just kind of 
you know, as you can see, these are all f layered forms merged in. Wow. Um, and this so just all like, this detail that we're seeing right now, Gio, just to be clear, this, this you did all this in Medium. Oh, yeah. I've, I've not once taken it out of Medium at this point. Wow. And to show you the hard surface stuff, like. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. So all that is, I mean, people are like, well, but you know, I mean, I've seen some really amazing hard surface work by the I mean, medium this is community. Incredible. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't, it's blowing. I mean, it's just blowing my mind. This is incredible how it's just, it's smooth, looks so clean. Yeah. Because uh, people assume, oh, it's in VR. It's hard to control. Like really once, you know, I mean, yeah, at first, you know, you have to really think about the, the, the learning curve, which, you know, I'll be honest, there's, there's a learning curve, obviously, just like with anything, but once you, at least for me, once there was that moment of click, I was just like, oh man, it's on. This is like, this is a game changer in terms of the ability to, to get, and, and as the tools improve, like, I don't know what the heck the medium team have in mind for future releases, but if it keeps improving from here, I mean, I, you can bet that we're even going to get the ability to, to create better forms, right? Cleaner forms. Um, so what I want No, oh, I think we may have <laughs> lost Geo again. Uh, Kelly, I'm not, are, are you on, on the, the call as well? Okay, everyone, sorry, bear with us once more. I think we may have uh, lost Geo. He's going to do a reboot. So uh, I think we might need to uh, move forward a bit on the presentation. So uh, let me just check in with the team to see where we can kind of pick this back up. And uh, we'll have Geo joining us again here in just a moment. Okay, so Kelly, uh, can you hear me okay? Okay, everyone, just bear with us for one more moment here. So we're going to have Gio coming back online. And I am looking to get Kelly uh, back up so that uh, I, we can shift gears a little bit and ask her a few questions. Oh, Wait, sorry uh, about that. Gio? Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah, I hear uh, you, buddy. Oh, uh, man, it, it crashed again. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's all right, man. Hey, uh, l l let's just shift gears and just move on past what you were doing in Medium because yeah. I know that you had uh, some discussion of what you were going to do with ZBrush. And then let's just switch yeah. over to Substance Painter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, I was just gonna do a little bit more of the the detail stuff, but since we're pretty much like crashing a little, let's de-risk it by jumping onto ZBrush. So, yeah, um, there was one comment in the in the chat that we need to get you a new rig, man. So we'll work on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. This, this rig of mine is is pretty old. Um, let let me just actually open up this file and then I'll share my uh, my screen here. Um, hold on. All right, so in medium, like say we're done and happy with everything, we have all the scales put in. Um, I pretty much would just export it because um, the, the the process I'm I'm really into right now is using Substance Painter as as a means to 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 do the final presentation of my creatures. Oh, there it is. Let me just hold on. Okay, so Gio, you're gonna share your screen once again. Yeah. Um, okay. Here we go. Hold on. So share screen, ZBrush. All right. Later. Can you guys see this? Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's good. And so, uh, 
Gio, just to kind of pick up from where we left off, see, one of the other questions we had is, so you, you've exported this out of Medium. Uh, one person was asking, like, uh, about the poly count of that, like how, like, when you export that, can you just discuss to mm -hmm. us the process of exporting the content out of Medium? Yeah, so uh, imagine we're in Medium right now. Uh, I, I go to file export, and I believe this creature was uh, about 16 million um, polygons. And it exports it out as the the different layers, whatever layer setup you have in Medium, that's how it imports into ZBrush. As you can see here, uh, I've just kind of split the parts, but it, it, it res respects that uh, the, the, the division of, of geometries. Um, yeah, so it's 16, 16 million, you export it. You have the ability to actually um, choose what resolution, what percentage uh, it exports it out as. Um, so I, I tend to just go for like the highest resolution just because I want to just, because ZBrush is a beast when it comes to uh, being able to handle like a uh, poly count. So this is like one to one essentially in medium, um, un, unaltered, right? Um, but saying that because of the fact that it's like, you know, like the head is how much here, 14 million, um, <clears throat> substance, you know, it's not really feasible to bring it into Substance Painter at this point and have Substance Painter do the auto UV, it's gonna crash it, right? So ZBrush for me is a necessary uh, step to, to, to get there. Sorry about that. Um, now, uh, Gio, when, you, when you're actually exporting, like what is the, is the format? Like, are you throwing out like an OBJ or is there another type of format that you use? Uh, I, I go for OBJ. Medium um, allows you OBJ or FBX. So I go for the OBJ um, option, and as well as I think you have the ability to export out vertex colors and UV tiles if you do decide to paint it in Medium. Me myself, I like to to use ZBrush's tools for for painting um, because I've been using it for so long. And and Medium uh, at this point, when you get to really high resolution models, the the paint is not as interactive. Um, so. I just like to kind of do that in ZBrush right now. So before we even bring it into substance, these are the steps. And, and <clears throat> it may sound a little too much steps here, but bear with me. This is, I think, in my opinion, the, the steps that makes the most sense, at least for me. So let's. this is the straight up medium uh, model uh, in this layer. So let's just designate this layer for now. Um, so what I'll do, is what I'll what I'll do is um, I'm going to duplicate this, and then I'll run a Z remesh on it. Because what I want to do is I want to be able to have um, oops, let's delete lower. Uh, I want to rebuild the. I, I want to have a subdivisional history I can work with, um, and and this will make sense a little bit later once. Uh, once this finishes uh, Z remeshing, Let's track that. I mean, if there's any question I can answer while this uh, bar is uh, trying to race up. <laughs> no, sure, man, no problem. I, I tell you, one funny question was, does it auto save? I guess <laughs> medium <laughs> when we wrap in the crashes. So hopefully, there's some <laughs> auto save. Uh, I I think there's an update that I don't know actually. Um, yeah. The medium team can because I've. It's so weird, man. I've never had those crashes outside of this presentation. It's like, oh no, yeah, that's how it goes, man. It's because we're doing a live, and 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 it might be me. I I have this theory that I might be a little cursed because, like, whenever I do a presentation, like, and it's live, like, like, I, it's something bad happens. So, like, I may have some kind of like little, you know, bad luck curse or something that follows me around that's affecting you now. Man, but, uh, you yeah, you we'll say see. it's bad luck, but if. I'll say it's good luck if the the medium team ends up sending me a monster machine I can work off of, so I oh, can, yeah. you know, it doesn't crash. Yeah, anymore. man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, silver lining to everything, man. Yeah, silver yeah. lining. Yeah, positive. But uh, no, man, it makes it fun though. I mean, yeah, it's a challenging, you know, stream, but I don't know. It's kind of fun, man. We're laughing yeah. about it. So, yeah. Hey, can you guys, VR. Can you guys yeah. hear me now, Kelly? Yes, yeah. we can hear you. Oh my Welcome. goodness. Yeah, sorry, my internet went out. <laughs> this day oh, to add to the- What's add to going the on, man? Yeah. <laughs> um, so on? I'm hot spotted to my phone, so I don't have my video, but I'm I'm here with my voice, so. Oh, that's oh, great, Kelly, goodness. yeah. Sorry no, about no that. <laughs> yeah. What a day. Yeah, what a we day. can hear you like really clear, Kelly, so no worries there. 
All righty. So it finished Z remeshing. And so um, well, how, how big is this? So 14 mil. Um, and right now the, the base Z remesh is at 14K. Uh, I'm just going to up res that, subdivide this multiple times to roughly reach the amount of poly count as our original medium head. Um, whoop, 36 million. No, maybe not. Uh, so once once I'm at this stage, I'll I'll project it, which I won't do because you know it's going to take a long time. Uh, I'll I'll project it onto the medium uh, mesh, which then the result will be. I've actually pre-done that for you guys, so it'll the the you'll have a model that has now a subdivisional history, um, and that's good because if you kind of want to refine it or work on it some more, you can then like capitalize on the fact that there's uh, you can work off of the little below all the way to the high. But the important thing about this step is once we go to the low, oops, oh man, Z plugin. That's where I'll, I do my UV master. So I'm in the low, I'm gonna unwrap it. Yeah, and what's cool that now you have the subdivision levels, you can you know export out the low and the high and, and do all the baking within Substance Painter, like for mm. you know your your uh, your um, normal map and and so on. Exactly. Yeah. So so we UV the low now that UV propagates all the way to the high. Uh, so the high now has a UV um, applied onto it. And this is where I then will either, you know, you could branch this, a, a way of bringing it into substances to, to do, as you said, bake a normal map and, and, you know, from a high and a low. Or what I like to do actually for, for the sake of speed sometimes, I just like to use Decimation Master. Um, so what I do is being now that there's a UV here um, on the high, I'll just, Go to Decimation Master and make sure to keep UVs turned on, pre-process, and decimate. I'm not going to go through that because, again, it's going to add to the time, but I've already done the, uh, this is the result of that. Uh, so this is the decimated head at, um, what is this now, 2 million, you know, which is respectable. I could bring that into substance and, and, and start doing my thing. Um, and, and it still retains a lot of the, the details. You know, that's what's great about the decimation master algorithm is it, it, it's, it's able to, to retain all the, the details that you have for the most part, right? But, you know, and then once, once we have that, I export that out um, pretty much. But I also use ZBrush, like I said, to paint, um, to paint my models. And, and this is, you know, what I do is that since this is already UV'd, I, I can export out the diffuse from this model and uh, and and you know go about it that way too. And and what's great about ZBrush actually, I just wanted to highlight is the um, masking uh, mask by cavity. Let's try it on the uh, actually. Let's demo it on this guy. Um, do a really quick de a paint demo here, um, if we have time, Wes. Oh, sorry, Gio. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. When we don't have too much time left, uh, mm. yeah, we can maybe try to just maybe just talk over it a little bit. Okay. Um, like it is really cool to kind of show what you're doing there with the cavity. Yeah. So what's great about like having all the you know the the detail that we put in there in medium, you know, you can I, what I do usually is is work with the cavity maps, uh, the masking to. Um, uh, to, to kind of bring out certain details, as you can see here, you know, crevices and, and highlights and stuff. But uh, yeah, so from there, let's go switch over to Substance now. Um, yeah, and one of the things that I, I'd like to say while you're switching is that's really cool about this is instead of doing the cavity with ZBrush, I would just bake this in, in Substance Painter because uh, the baking process is going to be super fast and you have that ability to, to be... Uh, to make changes and 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 have these cavity maps within Painter using the generators and such, so you can you know make changes more rapidly than having to do, you know jump back and forth and so on. Yeah, now I'm, I just have to say, guys, that I'm not a right now. I'm not really a Substance Painter pro, and so I'm even using like a, an outdated version, which I apologize. But uh, 
it's my intention to start <laughs> learning it more. Uh, I've been over indexing on the sculpting side of things, but what I really usually uh, use it for, like I mentioned, is sort of like to give it that final presentation, you know, um, beyond just like, you know, updating my portfolio of, to a VR scene of me in medium showing it off. Uh, I always like to complement it with like a, like a still image where it's, it's nicely rendered with, with paint and materials using Substance Painter. Or recently I've been also using Maverick Render, which plugs in nicely with Substance Painter. Um, oh yeah. Uh, let's, yeah, Maverick let's... Render, that's awesome. I've been using that as well, man. That thing, that thing just kills, it's so nice. Yeah, it's, it's, and you just set up your Substance files yeah Open up maverick it just plugs in nicely so yeah they've made all these nice like plugins and like like interopt with painter and designer it, yeah it's it's really cool the way it sets it up their displacement and everything is is, is super nice oh they, okay i haven't tried the displacement or you know i want to start messing around with the subsurface scatter like the skin shader stuff yeah. you know um but it, it's fairly simple my setup for this one it's um pretty much uh if, if we go on the the head here i just again it's very so are simple you are flat. you in substance painter now geo oh geez yeah, yeah. uh i haven't even okay so yeah share. i think we're still seeing the zbrush interface right now um stop share share screen sorry about that i thought oh, it would no, just like worries, override man. the zbrush so can you guys see this now yeah all good okay right so in in substance um so Gio, before you jumped in too much, one of the questions someone was asking was about your approach to UV mapping. So just to reiterate what you did in ZBrush was you used, you, you just used, uh, it looked like the default settings of UV master to create the UVs. Yes. And sometimes I would do the, you know, where you, you're able to paint the areas you want to retain areas of importance and all that stuff. Um, but yeah. for the most part, it does such a good job of just playing out like uh, the, with the default settings. Um, and if, if it's uh, more of a production model, I would just obviously hand topologize it, not even use Z remesher and then hand UV it. But for this kind of work where I call this sort of the, the more 3D concept work, I just pretty much use uh, Z, yeah, UV master and Z remesher, mostly in a default, default settings. Um, yeah, Gio, this sculpt looks amazing, man. Once you see this in here, I mean, it's just it's super inspiring. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's, and, and Substance really shows it nicely, you know, like um, you're able to just, I, I love this render. I mean, I, I wish we can add lights uh, to kind of yeah. pick up certain yeah. stuff, yeah. but the render itself is amazing. And it, it, it's so convenient because you're in Substance uh, Painter already. And uh, like I, what I was saying, I, I use fairly simple materials. Um, I want to explore, you know, like using skin, but I think for this one, I just use plastic rough um again just to kind of uh because you know he, he's not really going to be a very subsurfacey kind of a creature i figured um, for the most part i mean it would be nice to get subsurface on the skin here but um you know it it, it looked good enough i think to yeah we have the that. subsurface shader in substance painter um again you mentioned you were using an older build i'm not sure which one you have but we do have subsurface in painter that will translate here to the render which is an iray uh renderer yeah, no, ideally I would have used that one to get more of a subsurface feel to the skin. And then I'm pretty happy with a shell-like uh, area here. Yeah. So I would have probably blended it in with this material currently, but this this is a work in progress. As you can see, I didn't really end up painting this, but yeah, so for the most part, that's the, that's the creature, you know? Um, I would take it here in substance and then I would just you know, screen grab it in Photoshop or save it out as an image and then work on it some more, add some filters. Um, but yeah, so that's that's pretty much my process of getting from from medium uh, with a few crashes along the way to ZBrush <laughs> to here. <laughs> so. Yeah. So, so Gio, a few questions. Uh, if you jump back over to your layer view, you had mentioned that you had a few materials set up. I was just curious on, so if this was coming from ZBrush, are you using like uh, basically polygroups and then exporting that as FBX out of ZBrush uh, to, to retain polygroups to materials? How are you setting those up? Oh, um, so I export them as, 
uh, whatever um, subtools, I, I don't even think I made any polygroups for this particular model, whatever sub, sub tool layers that, uh, that I had set up in Medium, which ZBrush retained, that's essentially how I'm bringing it in with Substance. Oh, okay. What I did actually nice. was in Maya, because I wanted to bring it in as one model, right? So in, I, I don't know why I did it in Maya for whatever reason I did. I just brought it in there uh, and then exported it out as one OBJ. And then that's what I loaded in here uh, in, in Substance. Oh, it's, I think it's because I assigned different materials uh, in Maya for the different oh, okay. gotcha. um, parts. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. And so in the end, do you recall, like, uh, so one of the questions was the decimated 2 million poly mesh used without low and painter, like uh, at the end, when you did that decimation, you, you had mentioned using decimation master. Do you recall what the poly count was or close to? Oh, it was about 2 million. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, that, I mean, this is that essentially and it substance handles, handles it like a pro. <laughs> Okay, awesome. Geo, this is incredible, man. I mean, it was so cool to see you. Like like one person said in the chat, I wish I could find it. I meant to uh, I, I meant to uh, keep a copy of that, but they were saying something like, oh, here it was. I says, I, I work for an hour and come back to find some crazy badass critter where, where there were blobs of voxels. Uh, so yeah, you started off, it's like blobs of voxels and then here you are at this at the end and it looks amazing. Oh, yeah, well, I did do the Martha Stewart kind of like transition, but I'll take the credit. <laughs> yeah, but still, I mean, yeah, 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 I mean, you're still doing the work through what you've yeah. showcased. Yeah, you didn't yeah, show yeah. every single stroke, but still, man, that's, ah, oh, man, that was super impressive. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And you kept your cool through the crashes and the restarts. I love that, man. Uh, the medium team and I have gone through worse. Yeah. We've, we've uh, experienced a lot of uh, <laughs> just like that. You know, if, if the computer didn't kick back up, I would have been like dancing around here like a headless chicken. <laughs> so, yeah, but. we're gonna we're definitely gonna work to get you a beefier machine, maybe one of, with one of those fancy new uh, Nvidia cards. Oh, hello! Yeah. You, you guys, yes. you guys have heard it here. Huh? That's like yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we will work with that. We also, yeah, yeah. It's it's been an interesting day. Thanks to everybody for hanging in there. Um, yeah. Oh, thanks great. for your patience. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, Geo, since uh, this is kind of the end of your presentation, why don't we just transition? Over over to some Q&A. Uh, I think that we could probably uh, just, I don't know, maybe stop your screen share. We'll kind of go up to the camera view. Uh, right. Kelly, we don't have you on camera. I know that you were having some internet issues as well, but you are here to answer questions. So uh, let's just, let's just kind of jump in and kind of run through some of that. Uh, Kelly, I do have a few questions that I think you can answer as product manager. Uh, sure, and I can try. Yeah, I just got to go back and try to find them. So, so one of the question was, is there support for finger tracking, I, I guess, within Medium? No, no, there is not. Um, I okay. think, uh, yeah, I mean, that's probably mostly limited by hardware at the moment, but yeah. Okay. Uh, another question, is there anything, uh, like, I guess they're asking, like, you know, ZBrush Sculptress Pro for Medium. I, I, I don't know if they mean, like, so is, are, there, are there any versions, like, you have Medium? Is there, like, a, a, a version that's kind of a, a little bit more intro? Kind of like no. how Sculptress is? Okay. No, um, there's only one version of Medium. And right now it only officially works with the Oculus Rift or the Rift S. Um, a lot of people are using their Vives with uh, via Revive, which works. Mm. We never tested that. It's not a native app for sure, but people oh, okay. have good results with it, which is awesome. Um, awesome, yeah. Can, it's, not, it's also not native to Quest, um, but you can use it with Quest via Link, which there's actually currently a pretty funky bug on the Oculus side for the Quest Link cable and Medium, but uh, people are having really good results using Quest with virtual desktop and Medium, which actually works pretty well. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's the hardware it works on, but obviously moving away from Oculus and Facebook and not being a first party tool kind of opened a lot of different opportunities for us now that we're at Adobe. So pretty excited to explore mm -hmm. all of that. It's gonna be, yeah. The yeah, I think we are oyster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think we all are. Yeah, it's like uh, just hearing that news about you guys joining Adobe, and then we're all going to be working together, man. I was like, uh, it was so cool, and it's like, uh, yeah, I can't wait to work with you. And and Brent's in the chat. Brent's amazing. Uh, yeah. It's just gonna be, it's gonna be fantastic what the future holds. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. Like the thing that I always say is like, guess what, you guys? Adobe has a modeling tool now. Which is yeah. pretty big deal. <laughs> yeah, Adobe, exactly. I think, has tried plenty of times to, you know, break into 3D, and I think we finally yeah. all we have all the pieces now, which is pretty exciting for the future. Yeah. 
And I kind of like to look at it like substance as a modeling tool is the kind of where I'm coming from in, in my head, you know? So I think that's really cool. Uh, yeah. So yeah, another question here, Kelly, uh, uh, and maybe Gio, you can speak to this as well. Uh, is there a masking tool in Medium? Uh, no, but Kelly, I don't know if yeah. uh, you Not yet. Oh, not yet. Okay. I think oh, Lydia, not yet. Lydia responded in the chat maybe, I think, but, um, but yeah, no, no, not yet, but we're working on that. That's definitely a lot, that and pinch crease are a longstanding request for our users oh. and we're actively working on it for sure. Awesome, awesome. Nice. Uh, so, so one of the things that, uh, I think, uh, Maureen had picked up in the chat that people were asking about, you know, we, we, I think they mentioned about having hotkeys, uh, uh voice hotkeys. <laughs> that was something that was coming as a request. Have you guys heard that before? Like some type of like voice or yeah, gesture or hotkey yeah. system? People have for sure talked, I mean, we've definitely talked about that. Um, mo a lot of times, I mean, Lydia actually is really big on accessibility. And so we're always trying to like think of different ways um, to, to make art creation more accessible, but also, I mean, just typing and doing things in VR is not um, that fun. So making that oh, as easy as yeah. possible is good. But yeah, we, we haven't like worked on it, worked on it yet, but we've definitely talked about it. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just kind of rapid firing these questions at you guys. So uh, uh, Geo, um, this one was uh, make surface noise textures, what it says, uh, I guess wondering like, oh, I think this came in when we, when in, in medium, like when you were talking about kind of more of the high detail pass, is mm -hmm. there like a surface noise texturing type solution, maybe similar to ZBrush? Or, no. or were you just sculpting by hand the details in? Yeah, I, I was just sculpting by hand, but there's no way to, at least correct me if I'm wrong, Kelly, but there's no way to drag out a stamp or an, an image as a stamp and, and start, you know, stamping or assigning like uh, skin pore details uh, on a, on a, on a brush. Um, so I'm, I'm just been mainly hand, hand sculpting it, which for me is, is perfectly fine because I love doing that. Yeah. Mm. Is there a way to save tool presets for quick access, like favorite tool settings or anything like that? This is in medium. Uh, I don't know exactly, but it seems to be re to remember my my settings. Um, just outside of the 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 default, which I hope they fix the default white shader. Um, but in terms of the the background and and all that stuff, it and even like the smooth settings and move tool settings, it it seemed to remember it. Uh, I've not really paid much attention, so I can't really answer that 100 percent but yeah okay uh what what can you import into medium i guess mesh wise like formats uh, i've imported obj's uh fbx's converted them into and and kelly maybe you can i don't really know the technical stuff behind it but i've been able to import an obj and convert it converts it from uh, a, a mesh to a, the clay format that medium has and it's pretty one-to-one. -one. I did a comparison of a really high detailed ZBrush model I brought into Medium. Once it converted, it's like, oh yeah, it, it, it looks as it should. So oh, cool. so OBJ and FBX, as, as far as I know, I don't know if there's any other formats. Hmm. Uh, so, so Gio, this was another question for you. This one came in early on. So this was talking about, it says uh, Gio, uh, I think maybe you spoke about this. It says, Geo spoke briefly about acceleration curves and what to look out for while creating those rhythm in his design language, uh, along with what tools in Medium help with that. Do, do you recall that? I think it came in kind of early. Uh, so yeah, I, I think I was talking about the uh, like the rhythm lines or the when I was using yeah. the inflate to kind of just draw these accelerated curves using maybe this the the the, the stroke settings, right? <clears throat> Uh, and what was the question? How do I keep? Um... Uh, See, so yeah, I'm looking at it again here. It says, uh, yeah, so you were talking about creating those rhythms in your design language. Uh, it says, uh, okay, what do what to look out for while creating those rhythms in your design language? Uh, are there any tools in Medium that help you do that? Um, just, there's no special tools. You just really look, again, looking at it from the different angles. I'm big on that, like always. Mm -hmm rotating like you're not just looking at it from one two plane right you're tracing and tracking if, if i make the mark from this view i'm always assessing how does that look in the round and in vr yeah i could just kind of do this with my head right you know yeah, what's, yeah. what's great about it you're actually getting a better sense of depth to it mm -hmm. 
So I'm always looking at how that affects not, not just that one view, but the sculpture in all the endless silhouettes that, because it has to look good in every single view, right? That one mark, that one mark is a de decision that you're making, not just for that one view, but for all the views. So you're always looking at it, scaling, scaling out, zooming in, zooming out, you know, looking at it underside, upside. It's just a, a habit that I think CG sculptors need to, to get into. There's not really a, a go-to tool for that kind of stuff. It's your eye. Your eye is your best tool for that. So, wow. Yeah. Cool. Cool. I remember being a kid and just, you know, drawing and always thinking like, man, I wish if I could just, you know, take the drawing off the paper and just turn it. And then, you know, so I could get the perspective, right. And it's so crazy that we now live in this time where, yeah, you, yeah. you did that today, you know, well, yeah. this mic. <laughs> yeah, you, you did that today, you know, I've got this crazy, like Mike. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, I'm like using my camera. Yeah, I need a better <laughs> yeah. setup here. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, man, it was just that, that's what really got to me. I was like sitting there watching you just do that, you know, and it's like, as a kid, I remember dreaming about like, man, that'd be so cool. And then here we are, you know, you're doing that vr is uh, a medium's a dream for me like yeah i can't even believe we're at this point where i'm presenting to you guys in vr using an amazing tool for vr you know so oh crazy. yeah crazy times uh so kelly maybe this one's more for you this is there any plans to improve <clears throat> the uh dots dragging a tool without going uh very slowly tense i'm sorry it's uh I'm just reading the question. I guess basically like when you're drawing your stroke, you see some of the dots. Uh, is there a way to adjust like the dot spacing or any improvement that we're working on from that? I'm not exactly sure uh, what they're talking about. If it's a resolution issue or if it's just tracking. I, I don't know what they mean by dots. Maybe oh. the, sphere, the sphere tool, like clay tool. <laughs> Yeah, I guess, you know, Gio, like when you're when you're doing your stroke, uh, you're basically seeing those little dots like in Substance Painter, we have that it's like a spacing control. So you can make the the, oh. the spacing smaller. So it becomes like uh, where you don't actually see that. I think ZBrush has it as well. And there's a setting for it. I can't remember stroke what it was. or something like. A, yeah, it's in the stroke menu where you can change like if you if you keep it, if the settings really wide as you do your stroke, you'll see dot, 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 dot. But and, and I think we were kind of seeing that in medium. Is there a way to control that dot spacing? or maybe something that'll improve in the future. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it's still not super clear what that, I mean, you can do, you can lay down your sphere as like a, as a single instance, or it can be continuous. There's no way oh. to adjust that other than, you know, resolution. Sorry, gotcha. I'm still not totally sure what oh. that question is, but yeah. <laughs> before, oh, that, that's okay, before, yeah. Before it crashed, actually, I was gonna show how you can take advantage of that staggered dots. Like if you remember in, on the surface, mm -hmm. There's like these sort of like almost scale like dot 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 dot. Yeah, spacing. up towards the top. Yeah. Yeah. So I was actually using that to my advantage, um, kind of like the stroke, so that it's intentional. And then I would kind of just stagger it so that it looks like brick laying, right? So it's not like on top of each other, and it produced a really nice uh, scale. But uh, from from a user's perspective, uh, I, I would just if I if I don't if I want to avoid that, I would just control it with the cadence of my my uh how i apply the stroke right like if it's too fast and yeah i'm i'm gonna get it it's just the way it is but as long as it's straight in the areas that i care about and usually in those areas that's like where it's central to where the tip is so i have utmost control mm -hmm. and if i accelerate from there then i just kind of smooth it out but yeah it would be nice to be able to control that that staggering kind of like zbrush's um stroke stroke tools yeah, I'm seeing in the chat that it was that there's being referenced as dot spacing is a function of input latency. I think Davide also commented like he said uh, he thinks he's asking for sweeping, uh, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's see here. Uh, just looking at our time, we'll, we'll go just a little bit more, hit some more of these questions here. Uh, is Are there any plans for a surface clay mode uh, to complement uh, the vortex mode, uh, as in the... Uh, codon app thanks sorry i'm not i'm not uh, think i'm reading that correctly but uh does that make sense to you geo uh oh, they were asking uh, mm -hmm. any plans for surface clay mode to complement the vortex mode oh anything with regards to plans on what medium has i i'm the wrong one to ask I, yeah I know. <laughs> yeah kelly are you are, are you aware of what that is i'm sorry i don't know medium enough to know about the vortex mode is that a mode with the medium? <laughs> i don't know what vortex mode is um I mean, it, it that, the that's a, the 
swirl. Yeah, I don't know what vortex mode is. Um, but yeah. Okay. Uh, so no worries, guys. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. No worries, guys. Okay, I'll I'll check that answer. Okay. Move sorry, guys. Yeah, I like. Yeah. I, it sounds super cool. Whatever. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Vortex. <laughs> I wish so I could sorry. show that. Yeah. Yeah, let's just blame me, guys. I'm reading the questions wrong. I'm sorry, no, guys. I mean... uh, let's say, uh, could uh, okay, can it export SDL for 3D printing? I think you maybe mentioned something like this, Geo. Uh, I don't think. It, I, no, I no. Not seen yeah. It. <clears throat> okay. Sorry, Kelly. <clears throat> yeah, no STLs, but I think most printers take OBJs, or you have different tools that you mm. can do. If your printer only takes STLs, you can do it. Okay, uh, so so this is uh, this is just an open ended question for you, Geo. Like, what feature would you like to see in Medium? This is totally putting you on the spot. Mm, um, so, yeah, what do you think? Well, there's many. Well, masking is one mm. um, sort of uh, sort of like a constraint sur to surface, so that we have the ability to control. So that you know, when I when I showed you the needle nose, remember when I was kind of like gouging on the surface, it I have like the ability to kind of control just how hard the surface is, just like clay. Pretty much anything to make it seem like the, the surface is like clay in, in terms of tactility and, and feel. And that's why I compensate for it by adjusting the tools to give it really low settings, right? But if, if, if we have the ability for medium to be able to do that without that, I think that would be pretty cool. And it, it gives it that extra layer of physicality that you're already there with this thing. You feel like you're there with this thing. Now it has to feel like it's a real thing, right? So. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Gio. So uh, unfortunately, I think we do need to wrap. I know that uh, we have Kelly who is is on a tight schedule right now. So I mm -hmm. do want to make sure that uh, we just kind of close out. Kelly, if you got to go ahead and jump off, uh, that that that's that's perfectly fine. Uh, but I just definitely want to thank uh, everyone for joining us here today. Uh, so Gio, it's really awesome to have you, your presentation. Ke Kelly, thank you so much for joining us as well. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you. So amazing to have you as part of the Adobe team. I, I look forward to working with you in the future. Uh, so um, yeah, Kelly, I know you probably have to jet, but if there's any closing I, comments or anything you want to make. Um, no, I just wanted to, to so. say, say thank you again. I'm really excited to get to know the substance community better. And I'm so excited for the future of Medium and what we're going to bring um, to the org and how we can all work together and make a really a set of really cool tools for everyone. So that's yes, it. And perfect. thank you, Gio. Thanks for plowing. Thanks for having me. Those type <laughs> Sorry for <laughs> and that. And thanks to everybody else. Ne next one, uh, we'll get Gio a beefy machine in the next one. Yeah. Yeah. Super smooth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Man, right. so that was good. Uh, yeah, thank thanks, you, Kelly. Guys. I know, I know I... you got a jet. Yeah, we'll go yeah, ahead and I'll close without off. you. All right. Thank okay, you, Kelly. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye, Kelly. Yeah, thanks. All right. So again, thanks everyone for joining us here today. So I do want to mention our next live stream. Uh, so we have, this is going to be coming up on September 30th, and this is going to feature Jem, uh, known as BlockMind on ArtStation. So he's been working on this very cool project with us, and uh, we'll have more info to share soon. I've seen the project, and it is quite awesome. So I can't wait for that. And uh, again, Gio, I just want to thank you so much. Uh, dude, I loved your presentation, man. Thank I just, you. I love modeling and sculpting. Uh, it's so, it was really cool to see you go through that. Super inspiring. I can't wait to, to jump into Medium myself and give it a try. Uh, really amazing to see how you were able to get so much polish. Like one of the things I think I was a little concerned with, with just VR sculpting in general was like you had mentioned before, like overall control, like yeah. not, and, and I see with what you're doing, like, man, it, it looks amazing. Like the, the results you're getting. So yeah, man, it's really cool. Yeah, medium, medium is really, I mean, I'm not just saying that because I use medium. It, it really is the tool. Yeah. If there's an advantage medium has over a lot of the other tools, you know, it is, it is that essentially. That, that's incredible. Among many. All right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, thanks, Gio, for your time, everyone. I do want to apologize for the, the stream, the kind of the technical glitches we had. I, I appreciate everybody sticking with us. I, uh, we, this will be recorded and uploaded, so you'll, you'll still see some of those glitches, but uh, at least you can kind of fast forward through those parts. Uh, but again, yeah, just kind of the live stream environment. But Gio, man, thanks. Dude, you kept your cool totally. No problems. So uh, thank you so much. And uh, again, thanks, everyone. Take care, be safe, and we will see you next time. See you guys. Thank Take you. Care.